It's a trifle. It's got all of these layers. First, there's a layer of lady fingers, then a layer of jam, then custard, which I made from scratch. Mm -hmm. Then raspberries, more lady fingers, then beef sautéed with peas and onions. <laughs> and a little bit more custard. Oh, my God, she, she made half an English trifle and half a shepherd's pie. <laughs> that tastes like feet. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at Rachel's Trifle, a dish that relies on the virtue of the idea that jam, good, meat, good. So in other words, a dish that's going to fail miserably. Let's start by making our homemade custard. We're gonna place three and a half cups, well, three and a quarter cups after we've spilled a bunch of whole milk into a medium saucepan. Then in an auxiliary bowl, we're going to combine one cup of sugar, half cup of cornstarch, and a good pinch of kosher salt. We're gonna whisk that to combine before adding five whole egg yolks, scraping every last little bit in there and whisking to a pale paste. Then once our milk gets a little bit steamy, we're going to add about a cup very slowly to temper the mixture, temper our eggs, make sure that they don't cook, before adding the tempered egg mixture back to the milk, whisking everything constantly. Gotta keep whisking. Add a solid dollop of vanilla paste, cook gently over medium-low heat until thickened, and finish with maybe three or four tablespoons of butter. Oh, hang on a second. Mary Berry's walking over to my table to taste my creme pat. The creme pat is terribly scrubby. Well, sorry, Mary, but I'm going to ruin it by adding ground beef to this trifle. So we're going to start by sauteing, as Rachel described, some onions, just letting these sweat a little bit before removing from the pot and browning a whole bunch of ground beef. I'd give you measurements for all this stuff, but I'd hope that you're not going to try this in real life. Once the beef is browned, add the onions back to the party and a whole bunch of frozen English peas. Cook until heated through, and then we're going to try to make the most basic of shepherd's pie filling by adding a few tablespoons of flour, cooking to get rid of some of that raw flour taste, and then slowly adding a bunch of beef stock until a thick gravy is formed. Season with salt and freshly ground pepper. Not that it matters, but make sure you scrape up all that good stuff from the bottom of the pot, and it's time to start assembling our trifle. Let's start with a layer of lady fingers, a layer of jam, custard, which, by the way, we made from scratch. Just half the batch for now because we need the rest for the topping. Then a layer of fresh raspberries. This trifle is starting to look promising. Another layer of lady fingers. This is going to act as a buffer from the, all the moisture of our ground beef mixture. Spread it on evenly, making sure to leave a little room at the top for another layer of creme pat. Smooth it out and then top with a layer of sliced bananas. Doesn't that just look lovely? Now, this being a trifle, we need to let those lady fingers absorb some of the moisture, so we're refrigerating this for about four hours before finally digging in. I realize now that I forgot the whipped cream that Rachel added, but I'm sure this is still going to be really, really good without it. Uh, trying to keep it down, trying to swallow it, trying to chew it. I uh, can't do it. Had to spit it out. Does it taste like feet? No, but it tastes like ground beef, custard, and bananas, so it's absolutely disgusting. Making a halfway edible version of this is going to be a challenge, so let's start by mincing up a whole chuck roast. Nice small bite-sized pieces that we're going to brown in a little bit of olive oil until we get some nice color on there and some nice fondant on the bottom of the pot, into which we're going to dump a chopped onion. Paying no attention to the bits of meat stuck to the outside of the pot, we're going to add a few chopped mushrooms and a finely chopped carrot. Okay, we got rid of that stray meat. Now we're going to deglaze with about a half a cup of red wine and a half a cup to a cup of beef stock. We're then going to add a teaspoon each freshly chopped thyme, rosemary, and sage. Maybe a tablespoon of tomato paste. Don't forget to scrape your fund. Adding the beef back to the mixture, supplementing with extra broth if necessary, partially covering and simmering for two hours. Thickening with cornstarch at the end of cooking. Now it's time to make our stand-in for ladyfingers. I thought cornbread would be a good way to go. I'm heating two tablespoons spoons each, vegetable oil and butter in a 10 inch skillet in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven. I'm measuring out 11 and a half ounces of cornmeal, maybe two ounces of all purpose flour, a good pinch of sugar, smaller pinch of salt, two teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, whisk until thoroughly combined before adding one half cup of whole milk and a cup of buttermilk. You could also optionally use sour cream. We're gonna add the first of two eggs, cracking with two hands before realizing that we're on camera, we should crack it with one hand, and whisk until thoroughly combined before removing our preheated pan from the oven and pouring in our batter. Ideally, you should hear a nice sizzle as the batter hits the hot oil and butter. Spread around evenly and place back in the oven for 35 to 40 minutes or until a tester comes out clean. Next up, the raspberry jam surrogate. We're gonna start by heating half a pint of raspberries and maybe a half a cup of wine 
and a little splash of balsamic vinegar, a big pinch of sugar, a little pinch of salt. Crush up those raspberries and cook over medium heat for 30 to 40 minutes or until thick and jam-like. Last but not least, the issue of custard. We're just going to make a roux here out of four tablespoons each, butter and flour, drizzling in two to two and a half cups of whole milk until a thick bechamel forms that we're going to grate a bit of whole nutmeg into. It's always welcome in bechamel. Season with a bit of salt and season with a bit of salt and cook until thick and custard-like, adding an egg once cooled to make it more like a moussaka topping. Now it's time to assemble. We're filling a buttered casserole with our beef stew mixture, topping with slices of our cornbread, topping that with our jammy sort of raspberry sauce, and topping that with our bechamel custard thing. Then for another hit of flavor and color, we're going to top that with a healthy grating of Romano cheese. That's going to turn nice and brown during its 30 minute stint in a 350 degree oven. Now, if this weren't already enough of a culinary mishmash, it's time to address the bananas that Rachel puts on top. The closest thing that I can think of that would be a savory equivalent to that would be tostones. So we are frying some slices of green plantain in a bit of vegetable oil, taking them out of the oil, draining them on paper towels, smashing them, and then dipping them in some ice water before refrying them once more. I kind of wish we could just eat these because I love tostones, they're delicious, and go especially well with a bit of mojo sauce, but sadly that's not what we're doing today. We're making a savory topping for our savory trifle Frankenstein's monster, which is coming out of the oven and being left to cool at room temperature for 15 to 20 minutes before digging in. Right away, the color scheme, not very appealing. But let's see what happens when we top with a fried tostone. Now that doesn't help much either. It's sort of, sort of brown and yellow and red. And to be honest, it doesn't taste awesome, but it's totally palatable, which makes it a damp sight better than Rachel's trifle. And after having worked on this for two hours since finishing that other sweet and salty monstrosity, I pretty readily wolfed it down. We'll see if I can make this thing halfway decent next year. Hey guys, I was recently asked to take part in a cooking challenge called Ad Lib Dinner Party, which was presented by Geico. It was a lot of fun to film. I really had to think on my feet to come up with recipes on the fly. I ended up making a delicious elote soup, and we'll check out the video and you'll see. I've put a link in the description below so it's easy to get to, and if anything from the video looks especially good to you, you'll be able to find the recipes for everything I made. Think of it as a little holiday bonus babish.